I'm Father Robert Balancer, the Digital Jesuit, here at Showstoppers for CES 2014. Let's get geeky. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Dick T. Bartolo, Mads Mattis, Trider, and the Gizwiz at CES Showstoppers. They told me there was a very basic kind of car here. I mean, this is really ridiculous. It's like Stone Age travel. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. This is it. Oh, that, I remember Elio Motors. Hey, you know, I found someone to talk about the car. I found Paul Elio, and it's kind of funny because the name of the company is Elio Motors. What a coincidence. Uh, or are you involved with this? Coincidentally, I am, yes. Oh, okay. So tell us about this. So its claim to fame is it gets 84 miles per gallon. We anticipate... Uh, it's a gas car, not electric. That's right, gas, gas vehicle. Uh, 84 miles per gallon, we anticipate a five-star crash rating, and it's ticket price for $6,800. Built in Cattle Parish, Louisiana, just outside of Shreveport, and with 90% North American content. So it's truly an American project. Okay, now is this car in production or? No, we will start production in the first quarter of 2015. We are accepting reservations right now though. And tell us about the motor. So the motor is being developed for us by a company called IAV. They do the engine development for Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Volkswagen, Bentley, Bugatti, Elio, and a bunch of others. Okay, and you know, I noticed there's only a door on one side. It is a one door. So it had two doors for about a minute. So I did the initial bill of materials. I went and talked to my industrial design guys, and they're like, Paul, why do you got two doors? And I'm like, well, because, because. I'm like, you're right, it only needs one. I'm Father Robert Balasser, the digital Jesuit, here at CES 2014, showstoppers for Twit TV. We're here at the Energy booth looking at some products for those people who need power and who doesn't need power. Now, what I've loved about Energy in the past is that they make really high quality very small power units for all the devices that you know and love. Let's start with this. This is undoubtedly the smallest notebook capable charger I have ever seen. This is the Power Gear 65 Pro. As the name might imply, it will give up to 65 watts of power to your device of choice, be it a small notebook or an ultrabook. My ultrabook uses 28 watts, so this is a natural. Not only does it charge my laptop, but it has a USB charging port, which means this can be the only device I carry with me when I travel on the road. Now let's take one step further. We know that you're gonna need to charge up your individual devices. That's where this comes into play. This is the Pocket Cell Duo. It's a 6,800 milliamp hour battery. Now here's the rub. It actually has two high power USB ports. That means I can charge two phones or even two tablets at the same time. I've actually had one of these things for about a year and I have to say, one of my favorite power packs of all time. Now let's stick, take a step back from power packs and think about what your living room looks like. If you're like me, you have five, six, seven different power adapters running from the wall. It's a tangle of cables. It's a rat nest. Well, if you want to get rid of that wet rat nest, they have this, the Life Hub. The Life Hub, quite simply, is a power hub at the end of a 14-foot cable, which means you take one plug and you get three USB charging devices in a really easy to find package. It also comes with this cable management device so you can wrap it up when you're not using it anymore. Now, Energy is not the only company here displaying power wares, but they're definitely one of the ones on the cutting edge. You know, if only there was a way to move things around on a smartphone without your finger being over the content, there's nothing like that. Dick, there is. There is? <laughs> there is, it's okay. Census. Oh, okay. This allows you to control, take the touch interface from the front and move it to the back and sides of your device. So the very, for the very first time, you're able to touch the back. All right, I'm gonna move. There you okay. go. Oh, look at this. Look and you're at, able can I touch to the control, side? You can touch the side as well. Okay, and this cost? It costs around $99 retail. We're shipping dev kits right now. Okay. You can go to getcensus.com to get one. Perfect. A problem solved. Every once in a while, we run across the story of a company that has, well, soul. 
and Empowered is definitely one of them. They make this, the Lucy. Now the story behind the Lucy was that they made it after the disaster in Haiti because they needed something that was sustainable, a lighting source that anyone could use that was cheap enough to distribute and light. And this is it. It's a solar powered lamp that with eight hours of direct sunlight can provide light for 12 hours. The way it does that is by using a diffuser element in order to give you colors or a white light in any sort of environment. A cool thing about this is because they're inflatable and because they are so light, you can ship them en masse to areas that need them, developing countries or disaster areas. And they also have a possibility of, of doing sponsored buying. You could buy one and send one, just like one laptop per child. Now the prices on this are $14.99 for the original Lucy that comes with the transparent covering, or $24.99 for the Lucy Aura. I'm going to call this the party light. If you're looking for a lamp with style and a little bit of soul, check out Empowered. You know, e-bikes, well, we're over at eFlow Bikes, and this is really a spectacular bike, and Rob's going to tell us a little bit about what we're seeing up there. So this is the eFlow Flight. It's a new model for us for 2014. It uses a high-powered 500-watt hub motor and a 36-volt high-capacity battery pack in the seat tube to make sure the balance of the bike feels like a normal bike. It'll go 20 miles per hour in power on demand or throttle mode, but it'll go 28 miles an hour or 45 kph in what we call pedal assist mode when the rider is actually aiding in making it go faster. That is amazing. You know what, th there's one slight drawback is in order to charge the battery, you have to find some out-of-work slump to actually pedal and power the button. But luckily we found Carson, who basically is unemployed, but we keep him around. <laughs> okay. He's uh, so, doing a great job. Uh, he is. Uh, you know what, the, the thing is already up, uh, uh, filled up in about eight minutes. I think, so what I think is, he's done it. He's done it. What is a bike like this called? This bike retails for $4,000. The less expensive model retails for $3,500. Amazing. And it's the only generator that wears a bow tie. I'm standing with Ken Hosack, the Vice President of Business Development for Cradle Point. Ken, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, Robert. Now, you've got a hatchet. But there's a good reason why you have a hatchet, and it doesn't have to do with anything of, of violence against people. It's to show you why redundant external paths are important. In other words, multiple WANs. If you run a small business, a home business, or even a, a small branch, but with a large business, you need to have multiple paths to the outside. If your business is on the internet and you get disconnected, what are you? You're dead. Ken, tell me what Cradle Point does to guarantee that we always stay connected. We're very good at 4G LTE, and so we have network equipment that uses the wireless internet from Verizon, AT&T as a failover for wired internet like cable and, and uh, DSL or T1 lines. And so if it goes out, we're able to uh, cut over. And so, so many businesses use cloud-based apps. Small businesses use Google apps. Large, large businesses use their own apps. We keep it going. You need that network access. It's your Achilles heel. There are a lot of products that provide multiple WAN functionality, but one of the things I've noticed is they're not always seamless in how they switch over. In fact, one of the products that I bench tested last year took a full three minutes before I started getting a regular flow of traffic. You can't have that. I mean, especially if your business is online, you cannot lose connectivity. Now, could you show me in, I don't know, say a creative way, what it looks like when you lose your connection? Well, typically the first thing you see is a wired internet connection that breaks. Just like that, yes. And then the second thing that happens if you don't have a cradle point solution is you have no internet access. If you have cradle point, I just flipped over in this case to Verizon 4G LTE, didn't even notice that I lost the internet. Now, if they want to find out more about cradle point, about your solutions, about what you could maybe do for them, where should they go? Google Ken the X, or you can go to cradlepoint.com and uh, we'd be happy to talk about it. Hey, you know, OLED TVs, everybody loves them thousands of dollars. I found an OLED TV for about 30 bucks. Well, it's not a TV, but it is OLED technology. So this is really neat. This company is using OLED technology, this super thin, to make night lights for kids. They're making a book light that you, will, you can see through. And they will be out in next couple of months. And the name of the company is Alkalu. And so look for their OLED lighting. 
pretty neat stuff. Dick DiBartolo, Maz Madness writer, and the Gizwiz CES 2014 Showstoppers, the three doodler. I'm with Daniel, and he's going to show us what this does. Yeah, so this is the three doodler, the world's first 3D printing pen. And what it does is literally allow you to draw objects in thin air. So I'm going to show you right now. You just put the pen into the paper, and plastic feeds into the pen, allowing you to just draw up like that. And when I let go, oh my that'll word. be solid. Oh, wow. Oh, great. That's not my best work. But yeah, that's OK. What does some, this cost? This costs $99 US. Uh, and and you can see that once it's hot. Yeah. Are these rods what you? That's the filament. That's, that's the filament. That's the filament that we use in the pack. Oh, that's amazing. You know what, Daniel? I, I, I was playing around I was playing around here. Does this look OK? It's a little rough, but it's my first time. I'd be pretty happy with that. It's pretty good? Yeah, OK, thanks. I'm here at VaporCorp with the president, CEO of the company, Mr. Kevin Frieza, who's a, well, got a really cool prototype for us to take a look at. Kevin, what is this? This is our new V-Scan technology. It's a fingerprint scanning lock and unlock mechanism for vapor. Um, and what you do is you put your finger on the unit, and it will lock and unlock the unit, and it's unlocked, and then you can enjoy your vaporizer. What this does is it allows you uh, to lock your children out, for example, if you don't want your child to use it, or even if you don't want your wife to use it, you can lock her out of it as well. i got to ask, we've got a lot of geeks in our audience. We've got makers. What inspired you to put a fingerprint reader on a, on a vaporizer? Sure. Smart technology is the newest rage, and, and this whole CS show is all about smart technology. And this was something that was missing from the vaporizer community. And there, there's some... Regula regulatory issues as well, especially in medical marijuana states, for example. And now only the patient can have access to the unit. So it has a, a great use factor. Oh, I, I have to break this down a little bit because I know there's going to be people in our audience who are upset that we're covering something that's you know bad, it's smoking bad. But vaporizer, is, it's, a really, it's a new genre of technology that can be used for a variety of things. As you said, it can be used for nicotine delivery. I know some, some people who just like scented smoke. Tell me, where do you see this industry going in the next two, three years? Sure. Well, originally, uh, the e-cigarette uh, is attractive to a smoker. Um, but once a smoker uh, is adapting to the technology, they don't want to be smokers anymore. They don't even want to be seen smoking what looks like a cigarette. So they're upgrading to a unit that lasts longer, works better, has a longer battery life, and is smarter. So it's a smarter technology, and it's a smarter way to uh, smoke, uh, or actually to vape. When you're walking around a trade show, you see a booth called It's a Gadget, you got to stop. And I met Jason, the owner of the company, and Jason, what is this little guy? Well, it's uh, pretty much the only thing you need when you're taking a picture or shooting video for your iPhone. It's called the Izzy Orbit Pro. It gives you instant access to four different lenses. It's equipped with a fisheye. No, no, wait, I see three lenses. So oh, how? The fourth is accessed as you screw off the top of the, uh, of the wide angle lens and it accesses the macro lens. Yep, so you have access to four lenses pretty much instantly with the turn of your finger. Uh, by the way, it's patented in four different countries. Pretty much when you don't want to use it, you push that, take it out, you're ready to rock and roll. It comes with three different tripod mounts so you could shoot either in landscape or portrait so for whatever perspective you want it it also comes with accessory mates if you want to put it on an neck strap or something like that it's also made of aircraft grade aluminum so if you drop this bad boy your phone's not going to get hurt at all and Jason what does this retail for? this retails for 230 the product that we are um, introducing at CES this year and Showstoppers is our Izzy, Izzy Slim which is pretty much the baby brother and the uh, more affordable version. So this will retail $99. It's fresh off, off of Kickstarter. Um, unlike the Pro, it's made from a polycarbonate ABS material. Still, the, still the three, uh, the, the four still lenses. The four lenses, correct. So you still get the same output, same functionality, just a little more versatile. Right. Sense for the everyday shooter. Uh, iPhone 5 only? Correct. iPhone 4 and 5 for the Orbit Pro iPhone 5 and 5S for your Izzy Slim. I'm at the Dandy table, and I'm standing next to Mr. Matt Scoble, who is the president of, of Dandy? CEO, yeah, CEO of Dandy. 
And you have an interesting business plan, and that is crowdsourcing, crowdsourcing app development. Have you ever had an idea for an app, but you don't really have the technical know-how to put it together? I believe Danny can actually solve that. We can help, and that's exactly what Niger did. Niger was a customer on our site, submitted his app idea, and now he gets to see his app idea launch today at CES on Android, iOS, and BlackBerry. Uh, Niger, tell me a little bit about your app, and tell me how you came up with the idea for it. So I came up with the idea for the app from a scavenger hunt that I did for my friend's birthday. And so the app is just a scavenger hunt photo contest. And so every day there's different competitions that you can enter and win badges and prizes. So right now we're doing a selfie contest, world's best selfie. You win a free phone, unlocked any carrier. Oh, Matt, this is something that I think a lot of people in our audience go through, which is they may have an app idea, but they have no idea how it's going to come together. They can't program. They, they don't have the business skills. They just have an idea, a dream to put something together. Guide me through the process. How would they use Dandy to turn that idea into a reality? So the first thing they got to do is go to our website, which is dandy.co, submit your idea, and then our users vote and choose the ideas that they like the best. And if your idea is really good and people love it, you might actually see that app crowdsourced and turned into a real app and launched just like Niger. Matt, Niger, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you for sharing a, a vision of a crowdsourced app environment. Dick DiBartolo, Mads Madis, tried to end the giz with CES Showstoppers. We're looking at smart glasses. And Dan, tell us about this guy. Yeah, well this is a monocular smart glass, and it's worn different ways. We actually provide it with a headband that goes over your head, or with actual safety glasses that are... Uh, you know, I saw them here, I like this a lot. Yes. So you look so, less dorky. So it mounts, it mounts right here so that you can wear them during work or any other uh, uh, you know, activity that requires safety for the eye. And we provide that to our customers because we focus mostly on industrial, medical, and B2B space. And most of those people wear safety glasses anyways. So we give them protection at the same time while we're providing uh, information to their eyes. Okay, and then so in there we see, what are we seeing in the digital display? You can see all different types of information. So you can put it on camera mode where you're overlaying data into the, into the space, or you can put it into playback mode where you're actually streaming video back and forth between, maybe you're a doctor, you want to talk to the do another doctor, you can see his picture in here. At the same time, he can see what you're doing. Maybe you're doing remote diagnostics on aircraft. So there's lots of different use models for it. I'm at the GeoNaut table and I'm standing next to Justin Schneller, who's gonna tell us a little bit about the 360. I saw this wonderful little camera as we were leaving CES last year. It's now ready for prime time. Justin, people know GoPro as the action camera. You're trying to change all that. Tell me what this is. Well, you're exactly right. We're changing this because it actually films 360 degrees. That means it films all around it and even above it. So when you use it, it means you'll capture everything around you and you can actually enjoy your sport and not have to focus on what you're filming. Now what we see in the man standing next to me is what it looks like when you're actually wearing this. Imagine this is on top of your head when you're skydiving or if you're biking or doing anything of action. It will actually take 360 all around you and down to, was it 50 degrees down below? Uh, it's 150 degrees off the vertical plane so the only place it doesn't film is directly underneath it which of course is your head okay now let's get down to the specs because 360 is cool but this is a 4k camera if you're taking pictures and a 2k camera if you're taking video but how long does it last how do I get the data off what format is it stored in you're exactly right I mean it's three eight megapixel sensors so we've got 24 megapixels of information coming into it it's a standard file so with photo it's a JPEG and with video, it's an MP4. You connect to your computer via micro USB, so connection on the back here, and it spits out one file, so everything's stitched together on the camera, and then using our software or our app, you can view the file in an immersive mode, which means you can zoom around and scroll, look left and right and above you, so we make it super easy for the user to do everything. Well, thank you for sharing with this with us. I think cameras like this are going to become more and more important as we get televisions that can support the higher resolutions and as we get immersive technologies like the Oculus Rift. It's going to be a device like this that gives you that data. I'm Father Robert, and this is a 360. All right, well, you know, I had a little time to practice now, and I did this here. Uh, I mean, it took an hour. Uh, it's the Eiffel Tower, and if you lay it down, it's the Brooklyn Bridge. 
It's not my finest work, but it's a beginning. We're at the end of a long day here in Las Vegas. I could give you some sort of profound summary, but I think it's best said by my friend here. My father, Robert from Twit TV, and this is the end of CES 2014 Day 1.